The show will include a range of plants, including the Iris Germanica, Perlagonium gravelands, Camellia japonica, Hyacinths, Lily of the Valley and others, which have and are used in the fragrance industry for a variety of reasons. But in this short film, I wanted to focus on the rose and its many varieties. Pliny said of roses, I'm inclined to believe that the scents most widely used are those made from the rose, which grows in abundance everywhere. The heavily scented roses he was talking about were likely to be the Rosa Gallica, which was one of the first roses to be cultivated in Europe and one of the most highly fragrant. This is a depiction of that rose by the Dutch artist Peter Wittos, who painted it in the second half of the 17th century. He was a painter of flowers and insects. We have 55 flower watercolours by him, a few of which you'll be able to see in the exhibition. The watercolours by Wittos are painted on vellum, a high quality support made from calf skin, which was ideal for works of this type because its smooth surface allowed the artist to paint with fine detail. Wittos has done just that in this work and faithfully records the stripes on the gently curled petals. Another of the old roses in the show will be the Rosa Damascena, or the Damask Rose, which is a hybrid of the Rosa Gallica and Rosa Muscata. This particular watercolour is painted by an unknown artist called C. M. Boucher and depicts a type known as the York and Lancaster Rose, or Rosa Damascena Versicolor. Like the Wittos, it is also painted on vellum, but unfortunately we do not know anything about the artist, we can only see their signature bottom right. The style suggests that they may have been French and working in the 19th century. The rose has been grown for thousands of years for its essential oils that were used initially in medicine but which have become more and more important to the perfume industry. The damask rose is closely associated with the village of Al Emra in rural Damascus, Syria, where masses of the flower are grown for rose oil, known as attar of roses. It also produces rose water and is used to flavour foods, including jam. The museum also has this beautiful watercolour of a damask rose, or rose that is very similar to it, by one of the greatest botanical painters, the French artist and engraver Nicolas Robert. This watercolour is exceptionally well preserved and still retains its stunning soft pinks and array of greens, most likely because it has been part of an album since the 18th century, so has not been overexposed to sunlight. So the last watercolour and rose I wanted to look at is the Rosa Canina by the Austrian botanist and physician Joseph von Planck. The fruit of this rose, the rose hip, has many medicinal qualities and health benefits, containing plenty of vitamins and nutrients. The natural oil of the seeds found in the rose hip nourishes and repairs the skin, helping to reduce scarring and evens out skin tone. It is also anti-aging and leaves the skin soft and supple. So that brings me to the end of my introduction to the show Scent from Nature, Beauty's Botanical Origins. 